sampling gate first see sampling gate is simply a circuit which transmits exact replica of the input over a given period of time tg otherwise it will transmit zero nothing but so depending on the control signal or gating signal supplied to the gate externally it transmits the inputs to the output as it is see sampling gates are the transmission circuit in which the output is an exact reproduction of the input during a selected time interval otherwise it will be zero so that time interval will be given by a signal called gating signal which is represented here as a vc so gating signal or control signal we can tell so sampling gates are also called as since they transmit the input to the output so these are also called as linear gates transmission gates or selection circuits see sampling gates can be of two types unidirectional and bidirectional so unidirectional sampling gates are those which transmits the signals of only one polarity either a positive polarity or negative polarity whereas bidirectional sampling gates are those which transmit the signals of both the polarities say both positive as well as negative direction so let us discuss the operating working principle of sampling gates see consider here there are two figures available in which uh, switch s is represented here which are actually gating signals for example if you see the first figure so this is a sampling gate with a series switch a switch is available in series with the input what happens so the input cannot be transmitted to the output until unless this switch is closed so normally in this circuit switch is open so to transmit the input to the output the switch should be closed so the switch is normally open but is in closed position when the signal is to be transmitted from input side to output side similarly the second figure b so here we are having a switch in shunt with the input signal so here the switch is normally closed so if the signal input signal is to be transmitted to the output the switch is open so the switch is normally closed here in figure b but is in open position when the signal is to be transmitted these switches here which are represented by s here these are actually electronic devices they might be a diodes or might be a transistors which serves the purpose of switch in the circuits so unidirectional diode gate let us see how a sampling gate is constructed with the help of a diode so a unidirectional diode gate which transmits only positive going input signals is as shown in figure here one thing to be understood very clearly that for this circuit for this uh, sampling diode unidirectional diode gate there are two signals available so this uh, signal is actually input signal which is to be transmitted to the output for this the control signal or gating signal is supplied uh, here so this is called gate si gating signal or control signal so it is having two levels uh, minus v2 to minus v1 so if you observe these two input signal as well as control input signals are merging at this point means here a superposition theorem works here so to make this diode into on condition so the positive voltage at this point should be more than the negative voltage available here then only this diode gets forward biased and the, there exists a connection between input and output signal so depending on these two levels of the control signals the input signal will be transmitted to the output if this level minus v1 is there if this is exactly zero exactly zero then the entire signal input signal will be transmitted exactly to the output otherwise this output will be a function of these two signals like it will be vs plus vc at this point if this vs plus vc is a greater than the this diode voltage then 
that signal will be passed to the output side so here see this duration of the duration of the control signal is this much let us say this is having very small duration of the time in which the signal is positive value otherwise it is a zero zero and one so that duration at which this signal is transmitted that can be called as a transmission time there so let us see how this actually works in detail so this gating signal which is, which makes abrupt transitions between levels minus v1 and minus v2 this gating signal gate signal is also called as a control pulse or selector pulse or an enabling pulse so this enables the gate to transmit the input signal to the output side so let us discuss this operation see when the gating in signal is at its lower level means at minus v2 so when this is at minus v2 this diode will be heavily back biased means heavily reverse biased it doesn't conduct so it becomes open switch so you you won't find any output signal here there will be no output at all since minus v2 is a very big negative value so if this is applied if this is here then it will be reverse biased no chance of conduction of the diode and you will find no output <coughs> unless the input signal the peak amplitude of amplitude of input is larger than the magnitude of the back bias voltage means if the input signal is larger than this minus v2 for example if this is minus 10 and if this is a plus 15 so if you take superposition here minus, plus 15 and minus 10 it will be plus 5 so this will be on condition so until unless the input signal is more larger than the amplitude of this one in a negative way so then this will be on so when the gating signal is at its upper level means minus v1 so a time coincident signal input pulse may be transmitted means depending on the <coughs> superposition value for example if this is a plus 10 and this is a minus 5 so then only plus 5 volts will be observing at the output side because of this superposition concept if this minus v1 is exactly at 0 for example then we can see the entire output signal at the entire input signal at the output side so let us deal it with a small example consider <coughs> A control signal of pulse minus 20 to minus 10 and the input signal of pulse plus 10 volts for example in figure a see the input signal is a 10 volt pulse pulse which which is which the which is to be transmitted through the sampling gate and when the gate pulse has minus v2 equals to minus 20 volts and minus v1 equals to minus 10 volts what happens as you see this minus 20 is constant at any instant so what we need to bother about is a minus v1 level if this v1 level is equals to the input signal amplitude see input signal pulse is plus 10 and uh, minus v1 is minus 10 as per the circuit these two will be <coughs> added before the diode so so plus 10 and minus 10 you will find zero so the output will be zero for this particular control signal as well as input signal similarly consider the second figure here figure b here let us say the v2 minus v2 is minus 20 volts and minus v1 equals to minus 5 volts and the input signal is same 10 volts what happens here here plus 10 minus 5 you will find plus 5 volts at the output side and in the third case third case means this one if v2 equals to minus 20 and minus v1 equals to 0 volts as we have discussed the output will be a 10 volt pulse what happens is plus 10 and minus 0 the minus v1 value is exactly at 0 so we don't find any disturbance or distortion in the input signal the entire input signal will be passed to the output side and the <coughs> last case when minus v2 equals to minus 20 volts 
and minus V1 equals to plus 5 volts the output is a sorry there is a mistake here so this minus is missing here so when minus V2 is a minus 20 volts and minus V1 equals to plus 5 volts the output will be a 10 volt pulse superimposed on a pedestal of P what happens at 10 plus 5 it becomes a 5 a 15 volts this control signal output will also get added and it will appear at the output side so this <coughs> unwanted signal which is there on which the input signal is superimposed this is called as pedestal this pedestal is an unwanted signal which is occurring at the output depending on some control signal voltages this is how a unidirectional diode gate actually works as the as you observe the circuit there so there is a capacitor and a resistor the input signal vs is applied through the capacitor and the control signal is getting applied with the help of a resistor there so practically <coughs> speaking this r1 and c1 forms an integrated circuit which with which we find the gating signal as an exponential rising and exponential falling so ideally we are considering this as a exact square one so this type of gate is not suitable for transmitting continuous waveforms so if the input of a pulse of very short duration compared to the gate bit input may be transmitted satisfactorily so this is about unidirectional diode gate so the advantages of unidirectional diode gates are it is very extremely simple and there is very little time delay through the gate as we are having only one diode there the gate draws no current in its present conditions and the gate can be easily extended to multi input or circuit with an inhibitor or not terminal means we can cascade number of inputs to form a more number of inputs for the diode gate or sampling gates the disadvantages with this unidirectional diode gates are there will be an interaction between the signal source and the control voltage source and the gate is of a limited use because of the low rise of control voltage at the diode so continuously this signal and control voltage will be in inter in interacting and the gate is of a limited use because of the low rise of control voltage at the diode <coughs> these are the unit advantages and disadvantages of unidirectional diode gate now these diode gates if we want to accommodate more number of input signals than one then these can be the as as it is mentioned as it is mentioned here the gate can be easily extended into multi input or circuit if we want to accommodate more than one input signal for the unidirectional diode gate <coughs> the figure here shows it, it can accommodate more than one input signal here see there are two input signals uh, followed by the one control signal for both the input signals so when this control signals at its uh, lower level means when it is at a minus V2 then these two diodes will be heavily reverse biased and this does not conduct as a result we don't find any output signal so when the input signal when the control signal is at its higher level so this gate acts like a capacitively coupled or circuit hence the negative level actually the negative level of control pulse may be considered as an inhibitor signal inhibitor nothing but which stops the working of the circuit so the circuit is a multi input or circuit with an inhibition terminal here so if this is at lower level so no diodes will conduct you will get a zero output here when this one is at a positive level then so it works like a or gate multi input or gate so whichever the signal is uh, forward by whichever the diode is forward by us which that signal will be transmitted to the output side so the drawback of this circuit is that if uh, mul more than more number of inputs are added more than number of input signals are added this control signal will be heavily loaded with the resistances of the circuit so that difficulty can be overcome by using one or more diodes as shown in figure B here in this 
in the later formation of the circuit so the output voltage does not feed into the signal sources so this will reduce the loading effect over the control input signal here so thank you for listening in the next video we will discuss about bidirectional sampling gates and its operations thank you for listening to me